Welcome to week four of English 209, Non-Western Literature of the Americas. Uh, it was so fantastic to watch everyone respond to Drunk Town's Finest. Um, just to kind of recap, you know, we looked at Real Engine and we looked at ideas about um, <clears throat> representation. And, uh, and then we watched a brilliant indigenous storyteller who's now telling stories in the filmic medium. And that's so fantastic because all of that is absolutely contemporary, absolutely alive, and absolutely authentically Native American, it having been created by indigenous peoples, about indigenous peoples. And it was unflinching and beautiful. And all of your guys' comments were fantastic. Really, really great. So um, I think that that's a big part of our work here is just making sure, as many of you guys pointed out, you know, uh, our indigenous communities are thriving now. Um, so there. Now, the study of literature also means that we're going to have to look at some works that may not be fully contemporary. And, and it has to do with that ephemeral nature of the oral tradition. So for us to study Native American stories, which is part of non-Western literature, we have to find a moment in time to kind of see what sort of um, spot on the timeline we might grab after. The book we're going to read is called Indian Tales. While it wasn't published until 1953, it had been getting worked on for decades by a man who was living with a number of Native American tribes in Northern California. And it is made from his 20 years of experience uh, wrestling in ditches with shamans. That's the name of one of the works that have been done about him. He's an exceptional scholar and uh, interesting person. He was a, a renegade because at that time, that's not how, you know, we didn't, we didn't seek to, to learn language in this way, but he was a linguist and an anthropologist, of course, but he fell in love with um, the indigenous cultures and they welcomed him and treated him uh, like a brother uh, right in there. So he ends up probably having the most comprehensive knowledge of uh, Native American oral tradition of his time. So in that sense, the book is good, but there still remain questions of representation. And obviously, uh, as we've seen uh, from Real Engine and uh, Drunk Town's Finest, the greatest representations come from Native Americans. Um, a comprehensive narrative of the kind that we share right now. I'm still looking for that um, from an indigenous writer and uh, likely we should find that. And that can be part of our bigger project, which is a, um, a reader's guide to Indian tales. Now, there are gonna be a few more links for this week besides this video, obviously. Uh, there are some guidelines. Don't panic because we have three weeks to work on that paper. We're going to be reading this whole book in one week. Okay. And you know what? I mean, uh, you can do it. You can do it. It's a, uh, it's, it's a beautiful, it's incredible. It's just incredible. Uh, and then we begin to interview the book. We begin to ask questions about it and find out where is it the most authentic and where is it the least authentic? Where do its representations falter? Um, and so you will be uh, searching up in the research part. So that's going to be next week. So the guideline talks a lot about reading the book. So we're reading the book this week. And then next week is pretty much all research where you're going to be um, following the guidelines, uh, entering these data points that I have. There's a, uh, a link in the guidelines to the data collection tool. So you'll be doing that to kind of collect your own data and so that I know that you're engaged in the process and um and then you'll put it together in a paper and the guidelines should share all of that now i do have a um a forum for us to sort of celebrate that you spent the week reading this book we're going to have finished the book by friday and then you'll answer some questions on it to 
to basically show me that you have read the book so that we can also engage with some of these ideas. And I will be there to answer any questions that you have about what we'll be doing in week five, which is this whole data collection process. And, um, and then you'll have a week beyond to write that paper while we're working on something else germane to our class. Uh, thanks so much for the messages that you send every so often. It's always good to touch base with you. Um, again, remember that texts are only during um, office hours, Monday through Friday, but they are welcomed and I enjoy hearing from everybody. Uh, I hope that you guys will enjoy the experience of Indian Tales and um, I will be in the forum with you on Friday.